Hello guys, we're back here in Godot 3.3 uh, using visual script and I want to do a little introduction on getting uh, the input event working and finding um, all the proper functions you would need. Um, so as you can see here we have our mouse relative, our mouse speed, so how it if I do it really fast, get real num big numbers. Which mouse button we are clicking? So scroll is four and five. Scroll pressed, um, and here. So zero, zero echo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Enter, enter. And let's just get all this uh, up and running. So I'm gonna take this script. Gonna delete it gonna give you uh, an entire walkthrough on how to get this running so let me get the normal view okay let's just take everything that doesn't work delete and the entire function is gone so first of all we want to get our input function so we've attached our script here to our main node. Um, yeah. And we want to get the function input. Pre that's a predefined function and gives us an object. And that object is a input event. So we have two options here we can do. We can take the input event sequence port. So this is the white line and it's going to determine your order of operation. And at the very least what you're going to get uh, if you drag the input, uh, sequence port, it's going to give you a condition switch. Uh, so condition is your if statement switch uh, sequence iterator that's your for loop um, and your while loop and a typecast and in this example we're going to use typecast a few times the second option you have is to drag from the input uh, from the object and then you see those uh, sequence things aren't there anymore so the prints are still here but we get things like compare or mat down below here. And above that we get all the functions and all the properties we might want to have on that object. So it's an input event. And if we then go to look to our mouse relative, we will not find it because input event does not have mouse relative input events that's what we need to have we're working with events and here we see mouse button and mouse motion and in the mouse motion we have our relative uh, vector so let's go back and let's get uh, mouse motion so how we do this that's by using the typecast and the typecast so the typecast it's gonna check if an object is of a certain class so let's check if it is of class um, input event mouse motion and we can also check if it is uh, from a certain script but now we just need mouse motion and now it's also going to give us the hints we need to get mouse motion and it's going to check if it's if it is that object yes or no so for mouse motion we need our relative so let's go up all the way relative get relative and the second thing we need is our mouse speed so get mouse get speed then the 
Next thing we're gonna want to do is get the mouse relative text, so we gonna want to print it in there. And we wanna get the vector two into a string variable. So there are two ways we can do this. The first way is to manually take a constructor. And the first word, so we're gonna construct an idea, a quad or a string. We need a string, so string. And it's gonna take that from a vector two. So string vector two. And when it is a mouse motion. So that's our first object here. The second one um, will be of our mouse speed label text. Drag that in there. And we can actually drag from the string to the vector. And then it does this annoying jumping thing. Uh, but no problem, we can zoom out and drag it over here. And let's go back to zoom level 1. Because in other zoom levels the dragging of the ports uh, isn't as reliable. Um, so that's your first, let's do that. You see how our mouse speed and our mouse relative motion. So when it's not an input mouse motion, we want to have a mouse button because we want to know which button is pressed and if it is pressed. So we're going to do a new typecast because we do not, mouse motion is not useful for us. Let's do a new typecast mouse input event mouse button and so let's drag out the object get all the things from the object um, get button index get pressed Okay, and now we're gonna take our mouse label index. Sorry, we're gonna get our mouse index label and we're gonna take the text field and we're gonna set that with a constructor. Constructor from string to int. Okay, and the second one is our boolean to say if our checkbox is pressed. And we don't need to change anything on here. So let's connect that to the yes, because else it's not going to do anything. Okay, let's do a new sanity check. So our mouse is moving, we see the mouse speed, but the moment I press something, it goes wrong. It gives us this, I hope you can see that properly, it's a little bit glowing red. And it says instance is null. So we can see our input port instance is null. So that's, yeah, that's a proper error. So why is it null? We have our typecast, it's mouse motion. No, it's not. So we go. Then we're going to take that output uh, data from the mouse motion. But it's no, so we're not going to get any data here. We're going to need to pull it from straight input event. And yeah, that's going to work. Okay. Now we have, so what's a useful thing to know with uh, any um, visual script note, let's say 
we want to get a signal list and that's an array and I'm going to put it here on an instance so here we have our input instance and we have a pass object so this you might think of, of having the same line straight through it so you have an input and you have an output coming out of it and you have the return variable and with this node it's not clearly described um, but it's the functionality of the typecast to check it and only pass through if it is true so a little bit to watch out for because a lot of times you're uh, doing a switch and it's gonna switch on that uh, object or that instance as it gets passed through but you're gonna want to have to maybe the array or the integer that is the return value of your function it's just something to watch out for and that's our second part and now our third part is the input key so let's make a new typecast typecast and let's make sure we do not have the same error and we're gonna get our key if it's pressed and if it's an echo so button index um, pressed and let's fix this first because we want to get the keys input event key and then we get a scan code I think most people use a scan code and not a unicode um, get pressed and get echo so again let's take our integer to string here duplicate it with ctrl d and let's get our key text field set that okay then we have our echo pressed let's put it in pressed and let's just connect this now one of the things we can do with this visual script property setter we can just simply duplicate it because we want to do exactly the same thing but on a different object so let's just change the notepad over here and that should work oh. yeah that's working so here you have it um, not that difficult it is true you need to know where to find everything but um, didn't type any real code here um, and I hope you can, this is useful for you, good luck.